Hey there, folks, and welcome to my second installment of Antar takes someone else's team and uses it as his own. Um, the first time I did this, I was using August's The Running of the Bulls hyper-offensive RU team to kind of see what RU was like when you're not running full stall. Here, uh, my goal was to see what Little Cup is like when you're actually good at Little Cup. Uh, so you might not be able to get a sense of it uh, based on the battles that I upload to this channel, but my teams act on Little Cup actually are not very good. They're not very competitive. Uh, the thing is that the Little Cup Wi-Fi community also is not very competitive. Uh, and so that's why it really doesn't matter so much. But uh, when I was playing on Pokemon Showdown, you know, I'd regularly get massacred by anyone who had even a decent rating. So, um, and it just was because I wasn't using good Pokemon mainly, and my team, my teams, again, really weren't very good. So I decided I kind of want to get into Little Cup competitively, as it were, and um, so what better way to do that than to use this extremely famous uh, Little Cup team. Um, it was featured, it was a, a, the featured uh, Little Cup uh, Rate My Team in the most recent issue of The Smog, which is Smogon's uh, competitive magazine. Um, what else do I want to say about it? Uh, so yeah, it was number one on the ladder, and uh, every time I use it on Pokemon Showdown, actually about half of every time, someone would say, is that just, is that Hawkstar? He was like, yeah, I'm testing it. And they're like, yeah, people, it rubbed people the wrong way a little bit, but also I didn't really do very well with the team because people were prepared for it. Um, so anyway, uh, let me go ahead and talk more about the team. Okay, so we lead off with Snover. The most important Pokemon on this team. Uh, this team kind of came about, evidently, uh, in an era where uh, Sand was extremely dominant and threats like Sandshrew and, uh, what's that Pokemon's name, uh, Drillbur, were just dominating the metagame. And so Snover is on this team, not so much as, uh, because it's a hail team, but... Uh, so that it, as an anti-sand component. So the idea is you completely shut down those two sweepers and, you know, hit or destroy them with Blizzard um, quite easily. So, yeah, Scarf Nature is... Or not Scarf Nature. Scarf is necessary to out, outrun uh, the various uh, sweepers and, you know, actually outrun anything. Snover's pretty sn uh, slow. Uh, and a nice trick with this guy is if you lead off with Snover and your opponent leads off with Hippopotas, instead of switching out as your, as your opponent expects you to do, go for the Blizzard. 70% chance of hitting, and I don't know if it's a guaranteed one-hit KO, but it definitely does a shit ton of damage uh, to Hippopotas, and that is extremely worth doing. So, um, highly recommend... Uh, Snover versus Hippo Hippopotas, leave Snover in. Um, because your opponent will just expect you to switch out. Okay, so next up we've got Mysterivus. I didn't really care for Mysterivus on this team, but you kind of need a good ghost, and there's really no better ghost than Mysterivus. Um, yeah, if, this is pretty standard Eviolite, um, Timid Nature. Not the Nasty Plot set. Uh, instead, it runs Will-O-Wisp and Taunt. Taunt is to shut down Sweepers. Will-O-Wisp is to burn the plethora of physical attackers in the tier. Um, Hidden Power Fighting is for Porygon and also like Ponyard. Uh, Shadow Ball is for anything that doesn't resist it. Um, and yeah, it does okay, but the lack of recovery on this set... Um, and its lack of power really were surprising to me, and I really did not care much for Mystery of This, I gotta say. Okay, Timber. This guy is the star. People don't realize how freaking amazing Timber is. Um, what Snowflake said is that people think, oh, well, you know, uh, Timber's underrated because people think you have to choose between Mindfu and Timber. He uses both on his team uh, to great effect, and I gotta say, I just loved using Timber. Um, so... Lots of special defense investment. It's got a careful nature in addition to that. Uh, means you can survive surprisingly strong special attacks. He says you can survive a psychic from Sash Abra. I don't think that ever happened to me, but, uh, it still does pretty well. So, mock punch, drain punch, bulk up, payback, uh, standard bulk up set. Uh, payback is to hit psychic types and ghost types. Now, the really important thing about this Pokemon is its ability, Guts. This thing is a status absorber, and I cannot tell you how many times I've switched the thing into a status move and then proceeded to decimate my opponent's team just by being able to hit it with weak things like Mock Punch. Uh, it's really, really incredible. Staryu uh, is on this team as a spinner because uh, Snover does not like rocks being up, and most sand teams obviously are able to set up rocks, and so if rocks are set up, then Snover can only switch in four times, 
and that limits the amount of your chances of winning the weather war. So, um, besides that, not really much to say on this set. I, I wasn't impressed with Staryu. I'm just going to leave it at that. Mindfu, uh, we, this is a scarf Mindfu. Uh, Drain Punch is the better of the, is the more reliable of the two stabs, but oftentimes you need that power that you get from high jump kick. Stone Edge is for flying types. Uh, U turn for scouting. Um, I mean, it's a Scarf Mindfu, standard set. Lastly, we have his Ponyard, which I gotta say, um, Eviolite Ponyard, uh, I, I run a Ponyard, but it's Life Orb. I gotta say, Eviolate makes it so much bulkier, so much better able to survive hits. Uh, I would definitely recommend it as uh, the item. Uh, Swords Dance, Iron Head, uh, Sucker Punch, Brick Break, standard uh, move set. He says that he was able to sweep a lot of teams uh, with this Ponyard. Um, just, you know, uh, 6 owing teams with the proper predictions. I guess I'm not really good at predictions in Little Cup because I was never able, able to do that. I mean, it's it's nice as a... As a cleaner and oftentimes is a revenge Pokemon or to force a switch. But beyond that, uh, th I didn't really find it faring too well in my playtesting. But you know, a lot of things, the, the thing I have to mention is that uh, this is a very famous team. Using it in Pokemon Showdown, uh, people were, had been counter-teaming it and we were like, oh yeah, well I've seen this team a shit ton. I, I saw it when a Hawkstar was using it, so I know how to deal with it. So that was kind of what I was up against. Uh, overview, a uh, stalliness of negative 0.55 is actually pretty balanced for Little Cup. Uh, technically by my standards, it comes out as offensive. Um, but it's, it's, uh, if you look at the distribution of stalliness for the Little Cup tier, um, 0.55 plays it squarely in the middle. Uh, as a comparison, my other two Little Cup teams are far more offensive, uh, classified as hyper offensive by any other scale, but considering it's Little Cup, um, you know, what's hyper offensive for Little Cup is only standard for, or what's hyper offensive for regular, uh, uh, Pokemon is just standard for Little Cup. So yeah, Edie is much more offensive. Uh, Milo also very offensive. So yeah, that's the team. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the battle. So my opponent for this battle is a dude by the name of Mystical. Uh, looking at his team, threats are Taylor on any other, if I were using any other team, but with Scarfed. Um, Snover, I'm really not fearing it. Uh, other than that, Chin Chow is hard to work around. I'm guessing that Remoraid is Scarf. Porygon is annoying on any team. Uh, the other two I'm not really worried about. So anyway, I lead off with Snover. He was obviously expecting me to lead off with Snover, but was not expecting me to be Scarf because I just go for Blizzard and take out that Taillow first turn. Not a problem. A uh, little bit surprised I didn't protect to get the Guts activation, but I guess he figured he didn't need it. Gonna switch Snover out here, because obviously Chen Chao can take the uh, the Blizzard and you know might be running Hidden Power Fire. Go out into Timber, hoping to get the... Uh, get, either hoping to get burned or paralyzed. Um, don't get the paralysis, that's too bad. Uh, I'm just gonna go for the bulk up because I don't think he's gonna want to stay in. And indeed, he switches out into his Grimer. Grimer should technically wall this guy, but you know what? I'm gonna stay in and just see how much Drain Punch does. I am at plus one after all, and look at how much that does. Doesn't look like he's Eviolite, and that's kind of the issue. The real the real thing that I've learned about Little Cup is that pretty much everyone works with Eviolite. It's like Orenberry in, in uh, Gen 4, or Focus Ash in Gen 4. Um, Really, it'll help you out on pretty much any set, and it's kind of the default item. Uh, so anyway, he poisons me here. I'm like, thanks for the guts boost. He's like, oh god, your guts, that's not going to be good. So I'm actually thinking I can sweep through his team with this timber alone. Obviously, he's got some fast Pokemon that I have to worry about, but with the guts boost and the fact that I'm at plus one thanks to, um, whatchamacallit, thanks to um, Bulk Up, I'm thinking Mock Punch should do a heck of a lot of damage. I uh, hit his Remoraid, almost one hit KO, uh, his opponent thought he wasn't going to do Jack, and that's just funny. So here I decide, I mean even though he's probably only got like 1 HP left, I decide what the hell, I'm going to let him go for that Water Stop, but all he's going to do is 1 HP for the damage, and I figure do Drain Punch, maybe I'll get back more than 1 HP? No, I'm only going to get back 1 HP, and the Hail plus the Poison is going to KO, and that is a Dead Timber, but you know, I got two kills. I am pretty, pretty satisfied with that. So, he's gonna go ahead and send out Chin Chow here. I'm just gonna send out Mind Crew to scout out, and I said, hey, what the hell, let's go for high jump kick. Maybe he's not running a Violite and I can KO. No, he's running a Violite, that's fine. Discharge, I should be able to take it. Unfortunately, I, fully par I get paralyzed here. Um, 
lame, but you know, one more high jump kick and I should be able to take him out. Interestingly, he's running Rust Talk. So Rust Talk Chin Chow, I very, very much approve. Uh, it's kind of an interesting set. I don't get fully paralyzed, which is nice, so I'm able to get his health back down. And I'm just going to want to switch out here. I'm going to get some health back in the generator, but it doesn't matter because it's a Scarf Chin Chow. It's not really going to enjoy being paralyzed, and I don't think there's anyone on his team who I'm going to outspeed even after the paralysis. So, um... He's gonna get the discharge. I'm just hoping no, no paralysis, no paralysis. He doesn't get the paralysis, which is very nice because a paral paralyzed Snowbird would have been sad. Gonna go for the Giga Drain for the KO. I'm not sure whether just uh, whether Blizzard could have KO'd, and I just didn't want to risk it. Even though with Blizzard, I could have probably have taken on this Porygon. Gonna switch out here. That's fine. Gonna go out into Star. You basically as Death Fodder because I don't know what he's gonna want to do. He goes for the Thunder Wave, so I'm glad I didn't send out uh, Mistrevis, which would have been the better move, or maybe uh, Ponyard. But I'm basically gonna sack Star you here. Maybe get off some damage with a Hydro Pump. Uh, he's gonna go for the Tri Attack. I'm gonna be able to scout out his set a little bit more. Hydro Pump misses. Uh, lame bit of hacks. So the hacks gods really are not in my favor here, but I'm doing pretty well because this team is so good. So get taken out. Oh yeah, and also they've been making probably a few misplays. So at this point I figure I don't think he's running hidden power fighting. I'm just guessing here. He's going to withdraw, showing me that he probably does not have any super effective moves for Ponyard. So I'm just going to go for the Swords Dance. And uh, you know, I think Rhydon might carry Sturdy, but it doesn't matter because of the hail, which is nice. Uh, so I'm just going to be able to go for Iron Head, boosted, uh, plus two, going to easily take it out, not a problem at all. I was also thinking I might be able to take an Earthquake, because it's an Aviolite Ponyard. So now he's out and down his last Pokemon, I'm just going to go for the Brick Break, hoping that it's going to KO. It doesn't, but he's at very pretty low HP. He's going to go for the Tri-Attack, so I'm thinking this is GG. Uh, Tri-Attack hits, and he gets the Freeze. So that's some uh, bit of hacks there, kind of lame bit of hacks. I decide he could easily recover, and this could be a lot more stally, so I'm just going to go out into Mindfu, um, thinking that he would recover. Instead, he just decides to go for the Tri-Attack. I respect that, um, and he's actually going to take me out, so he, his better move would have been to go for the recover than the Tri-Attack, but he decided, eh, what the hell. So I'm going to send out Miss Drevis. so now you get to see the entire team, at least I got to use the whole team. I'm going to use Hidden Power of Fighting to take out uh, his Porygon, and that is the game. So Hawkstar, thanks for this great team. Um, Mystical, thanks for the great battle. Hopes you folks enjoyed this. I will see you all later. So long.